I think we make things more complicated than we need to when it really is all about Jesus Mm -hmm. and all about transformed in his presence by his power, um, by seeing him in Welcome to Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. Are you hungry to hear more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? Well, the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus. Join me for revelatory teaching, interviews with leaders in the body of Christ, and testimonies of God's goodness in your life. Thanks for joining the conversation to reveal more of Jesus to a hurting world today. But before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our Christina Prayer Ministry sponsors who help support the mission to unite the body of Christ and fulfill the Great Commission with love. A big shout out to Go For Ministries who provides all of our equipment for our gospel events. Davis Financial Services who does all of our financial accounting. Harvest Family Network through which I am licensed and ordained and Life Changing Productions, who helps put together evangelistic events to reach our city for Jesus. If you or your organization are interested in becoming a CPM sponsor, you can find out more information on our website at ChristinaPereira.org. Do you have a loved one's special occasion coming up and don't know what to get them? Well, now you can sponsor an episode of Revealing Jesus in their name. And you can give them a special dedication message read on air. It makes a great gift. To find out more information, just go to ChristinaPereira.org slash podcast. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I am your host, Christina, and I'm so excited to have you with me here today. I hope and I pray that you are doing well right where you are and enjoying the continuously flowing favor of grace pouring from our beautiful Savior and Father in heaven. I've got a great show for you today. I have an amazing leader in the body of Christ with me. She is an author and international speaker, the executive director of Life Bridge Global, and the author of the new book, Healing Rain, Immersing Yourself in Christ's Love to Find Wholeness of Mind, Body, and Heart. I have with me here today, Sue Detweiler. Sue, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here with me. Um, And you have just an amazing testimony of all the beautiful things you're doing in the body of Christ. And I've loved reading through your book, Healing Rain. Oh, I know. I'm just amazed at the miraculous way that God uses our yes, our Mm. obedience to him. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? I feel like sometimes I'm just cheating because I'm just saying yes and I'm just trusting him. Isn't it amazing? Oh, I love it. I It's the only way to walk is to have your yes and your obedience be for Jesus. Mm-hmm. So good. Well, I've told our listeners a lot about you. Can you share with them something personal just to help get to know you? Well, I was first called by God when I was a Mennonite farm girl at the age of 16. And I really had never at that point, you didn't have internet, you didn't have, um, I didn't do Christian television. So I'd never heard a woman preach before, before Mm -hmm. I began doing it. So it was um, something where I was truthfully cloaked in fear for a while, you know, that sense of um, being a woman in ministry uh, was really difficult. Um, But praise the Lord, he set me free from that fear. And I have been preaching the gospel for 40 years now. So I have uh, six children and eight grandchildren and two grandchildren on the way. So I am a happy woman. Mm, I love that so much. Well, thank you for saying yes. And thank you for overcoming that fear with the Lord, because I think every woman preacher out there has a voice that needs to be heard. And as a woman preacher myself, I 
so appreciate you. So thank you for that. Well, you know, you want to be a spiritual mama because the way I feel about it, like my children grew up with me preaching. And so they they have none of the preconceptions that I grew up with. Um, and so it helps to be able to stand on people's shoulders and be able to move um, with the Holy Spirit, knowing that he's called you. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You know, I think in my own walk, just going back to that, that knowing that I know that I know that I know of what he's called me to do. That's what helps us stand when the going gets tough and we, you know, we want to quit or we face opposition and things like that. So that's awesome. Well, since this is revealing Jesus, I have to ask you how you met our beautiful savior, Jesus. I was 12 years old and I was in a vacation Bible school and the man that was leading my class had actually been won to Jesus by my grandmother and my grandfather. Um, they had discipled him as a young man. Uh, and, and so I feel in some ways that it was a result of my grandparents' prayers um, my grandfather had been raised Amish and he had had an accident that, you know, he turned Mennonite, but he had a life and death accident where his Surrey fell over a little Creek bed and the horse fell on top of him. Mm. And so he was laying there ready to die. And by the grace of God, somebody found him. They got him to the hospital. They called in the family. The family called the elders to anoint him with oil. And he was miraculously healed. Wow. And he began, they, it changed their lives. They began to have all night prayer meetings in their home where they attracted these young people. They began to win people evangelistically. Um, my grandmother was an evangelist that would reach out to bootleggers. And, and so I remember Fred growing up <laughs> Because he'd be a man at their kitchen table that they were discipling and he'd be cursing. And it was just this funny picture of God doing a miracle through someone's life and getting their attention uh, through a miraculous healing. That's amazing. I love that so much. You know, I, I was just thinking as you were talking, sometimes God's doing a miracle at our kitchen table and we don't always see it, what's happening, yeah. but maybe we look back yeah. uh, with eyes later, you know, 10, 20 years later, really seeing the result of what he's doing in that seemingly very ordinary moment. I love that. Yeah. He's so good. He is. Well, I have loved reading through your book, Healing Rain. Um I know that, you know, you have been through some really, really traumatic and really difficult healing situations in your life. Do you want to share a little bit about your story? Well, yes. I mean, God has been my healer. And, and in most of my life, I just walked in tremendous health, you know, just a very healthy person, never sick until um, our family was called uh, to adopt our sons, two sons in Brazil. They were 12 and eight. And we went to Brazil for six weeks and I got sick. I mean, not mm -hmm. just a little bit, but my whole GI tract was contaminated. And Ooh. from that point on, my health was compromised. Uh, but it was a very difficult journey because I on the outside, I still looked the picture of health. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would go to doctors and say something is wrong with me, but they'd look at me and think, no, you're healthy. It wasn't until I found really the right team. And um, I can't believe they didn't do a stool sample on me. You know, you Think about some of the basics when you've traveled internationally that people should do. <laughs> but anyway, I, I 
my body was riddled with parasites and a bacterial infection that I had sustained for quite a while while trying to get help from doctors. And then it set up an, like an autoimmune sort of thing. So mm -hmm. Hashimoto's thyroidism that tries to attack your thyroid. You know, I was gaining unexplainable weight. Um, and then when you realize, well, the enemy sees <laughs> your thyroid, they just want to annihilate your body. So several other autoimmune things, you know, I mm -hmm. used to get huge bald spots and, yeah. um, so, and then I was diagnosed with Sears, which is chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Mm. And that has to do with when biotoxins mm. impact your health. So I both had the impact of biotoxins in Brazil, but also we had bought a home that had been flooded. And so I was impacted as well by mold. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all of those things can compromise your health. Mm -hmm. The good news is, is that God's been an amazing healer in my life. And a year ago, he healed my thyroid. I no longer have any issues with my thyroid. And the doctors say they can't heal a thyroid. Mm -hmm. You know, he healed the allosapia reta. Mm -hmm. um, he He's such a good healer, mm -hmm. but in the process of it, if you've ever gone through chronic sickness, I felt like part of what God was giving me was keys to mm -hmm. bring the body of Christ healing from those areas of chronic sickness in their life. Mm -hmm. And that's why I write Healing Rain the way that I write it, where I'm talking about immersing yourself in Christ's love to find wholeness of mind, body, and heart. Mm, well, I absolutely love the way that you wrote it. I have my own crazy healing journey, and we need to talk later because I had the same thing, Hashimoto's, <laughs> of which I no longer have anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank but Thank you, God. You know, it's so crazy, but I love the way that you wrote this book because it wasn't just focusing on the physical aspects of it, but you started mm -hmm. talking about heart healing and rest and, um, you know, mm -hmm. burnout and started making uh, different shifts and things and wholeness and um, healing from uh, an orphan heart. And oh my gosh, I thought it was so great because in my own journey, um, the Lord had to to, um, to teach me and he had to heal my heart first before I could even get to the really miraculous stuff and really receive it. And can you talk about the impact that our heart has on our physical body? Cause I think that would be great for people to hear. Oh, I think it's huge. And I, I chose to use the word heart rather than soul or spirit on purpose. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that is I was taking the way that Hebrews would talk about the heart in the Old Testament. And they talk about the heart as the essence of who you are, you know, your mind, your will, your emotions, that it was all centered at the heart. And so I, I chose to use that word because there's a complexity in which God um makes us. And I, I've been seeing this where there's all sorts of courses of steps to freedom and things that can heal you. But there are times that you may have gone through all these courses, all these steps, but you can tell that there's a residual toxins in your heart mm -hmm. and you're not sure what to do because you've forgiven people, you know, all of those things. And, and I want to say something that I've been really seeing. There's a prayer and worship movement right now. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was birthed in the heart of God. I've been seeing 20 somethings, their hearts healed simply mm -hmm. by coming into the presence of Jesus. Wow. And there are times that I think we make things more complicated than we need to when it really is all about Jesus and all about 
transformed in his presence by his power, um, by seeing him. And, and so in the book, I, I try to talk about positioning your heart before Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when you have disappointment, that can clog up your heart. So I tell stories of when people were disappointed with God and how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. How do you allow your heart to be cleansed of the toxins, or maybe you're in a toxic situation or a church can become toxic, a, a business can become toxic. You know, how do you live with an unoffendable heart? Um, and one picture that God gave me, um, and, and I see at different times when I'm ministering to people, and I can see it. They will come up with a physical need or something like that. But I can see where I'll see God's hand reaching out and holding their heart and massaging their heart. I first saw this in Brazil. And I, I will just see how God cares about our whole person. Mm -hmm. And often the healing is not a simple thing. It's a complex healing where he's healing our heart and he's healing our body. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would totally agree with you. I know when I was walking through my own journey, oftentimes the Lord would say, I'm loving you back to life. And I think when we, mm -hmm. when we face really toxic situations, just like you talked about, you know, we live in a fallen world. And you're right, it is really easy to get offended at God, but we have to keep that in mind. We live in this fallen world and everybody gets to make choices, even, even us. You know, today we're choosing to talk and glorify this beautiful Jesus and, and let others know, but, you know, we all have a choice in that. And so, you know, when we're in those toxic situations, I think it's really just depending on the Lord to really, um, lead us uniquely in each of those places because what works for one may not work for another yes that's right so if you what would you say to someone right now who is dealing with a health situation and they know that it's deeper than just the physical issues can you give them some practical steps that they can come into the presence of Jesus on just a daily basis. Because I'm so passionate about this book, I would first of all say, get a hold of my book mm -hmm. um, and be begin to go through that as a guide. You can do it as a group of people. You know, there's discussion questions. There's videos that can guide your journey there's a download of seven keys to divine health. So I really, I, I haven't just written this thinking, wow, this would be a great book to write. I've written as a journey guide. Um, and so in a practical way, if you're dealing with health issues, I would grab a copy of my book. Now, in addition to that, because I know there's lots of Christian books, um, but it's got to be books that lead you to the book, you know, mm -hmm. the word of God. And in a practical way, if you know that something's not quite right, I, I would just say to you, stop, drop and roll. You know, so many times in our world, our world tries to keep you moving fast and the world basically gives you options to medicate your pain, you know, through a Netflix movie or through social media or through drugs, through sex, you know, all mm -hmm. sorts of things to medicate your pain. And the world tries to keep you spinning and moving. And we forget the basics. Mm -hmm. And the basics are, first of all, one commandment that is broken over and over in the body of Christ is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And I think that's a commandment 
that brings health and healing and restoration. When God first spoke to me about it, he gave me an acronym of Revive Expectancy Surrender and Trust, R-E-S-T. And I really believe on a weekly basis, you are able to have a revival in your heart, in your home, simply by choosing to honor God with the Sabbath. So even when I travel internationally, I will schedule Sabbaths I, and rest because rest is something that restores your health. Mm -hmm. Another simple, basic principle that I think the body of Christ does not always take a hold of is, you know, one of Jesus' last commandments to take the bread and take the cup and to remember him. Mm -hmm. And I think people have made this like a religious ritual that can only happen at church. And I know that people have different theological views on this, um, but I personally take communion every day and I take it where I'm believing God for my healing. Mm. I take it like medicine. Mm. Um, and I, I, in my book, I include prayers that you can pray, pray over the body and the bread because it's by his stripes that we're healed. You know, having a healthy perspective of what Jesus did on the cross Jesus longs to see you prosper in every area of your life. Do you need increased health, wholeness, and freedom? Are you hitting walls when you try to pursue it? I've got a great resource for you, Healing Rain from author and international speaker Sue Detweiler, full of incredible testimonies, discussion questions, and prayers. This biblical guide points you to the words, actions, and miracles of Jesus. You will be empowered to trust His presence so you can overcome trauma and destructive thoughts open your heart to spiritual encounters with him and receive the power of his blood to heal every area of your life and just for being a revealing jesus listener you get 40 percent off and free shipping on healing rain at bakerbookhouse.com using the promo code revealing jesus pick up a copy today and be on your way to life and life more abundantly just head to the link in the show notes And I go through that in the, the first video that I do with this series. You're able to get that online. But I talk about the, the seven places where Jesus was wounded and what the finished work of Jesus means for our health. And so many times we don't apply it mm -hmm. to our lives, just like during the plagues, God said, you know, to avoid the death angel, they were to apply the the blood over the over their homes, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I think we don't apply the blood of Jesus to our lives. And those sound so simple. But when you begin to renew your mind with the truth of God's word, and by the way, um, many times demonic spirits are hiding behind our thoughts that are based on lies. And often if you have a lie in your mind that you're agreeing with thoughts like, um, I I'm just getting old. Well, where does that say that in the scripture? Mm -hmm. The word of God says he renews our lives like the eagles. Amen. You know, or, or the thought of, you know, well, I have an autoimmune disease. So that, that means that I just have to deal with this all the time. Well, where does that say that in the word? Mm -hmm. And by the way, I don't want to be uncompassionate to people that yeah. are in the middle of it. Yeah. And I, I just want to say one thing about that is too often we blame people, you know, for not being well. And that was the thing I hated the most. Mm. And I, there's got to be this healthy balance of not blaming people for being accosted by the enemy through sickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the same time, 
where we personally unmask any place where the chronic essence of sickness has put us into a victim mentality that we don't even realize we've gotten stuck in, where mm. we've come into the agreement with our diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's so easy to happen whenever sickness has become chronic in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, for seven years, I battled with autoimmune disease and Lyme disease and, you know, the formation of multiple myeloma. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, just mm -hmm. saying this is because, you know, all the doctors ever told me was, um, this is basically just your lot in life. There's nothing we can do. And I just refuse to believe that. Um, mm -hmm didn't mean that that's not what my diagnosis was and not what I was facing. And I completely understand what you're saying of um, blaming people for being sick. I feel like in the past, a large part of the church has been uh, guilty of shooting their wounded instead of. Yes. Yes. Coming along rather than creating a healing community right. rather than you know, one of the things that I talk about in Healing Rain is who's on your healing team. And yeah. there's a really specific reason I frame it that way. Um, one, I, I just give you permission. You don't have to talk about it with everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who are the safe people in your life that you can, that, that they believe in you? Um, and I believe that that, for me, included doctors, nurses, mm -hmm. At the point of losing my son, it included a counselor. Um, it includes different people um, that are on this journey with you and believe in the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to miraculously heal you. Absolutely. And I just, and it doesn't mean that they always get it right, you know, and it doesn't mean that their word uh, trumps even God's word. But those people should help point you towards God, God's word, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. 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 I I believe so. And and when you get a healing team around you, it's not focused on um only survival mm. because healing is about progress. Mm -hmm. You know, that there's progress. And by the way, in my book, I purposely tell stories when people get miraculously healed. And I also tell stories of when people believe for healing, had words and dreams about healing, and it didn't turn out the way that they had hoped. Mm -hmm. And there is a reason. I do that in the book. I do it purposefully because there's a, a mystery. And, and the truth is anytime someone does not get healed this side of heaven, their yeah. final healing is heaven. I mean, yeah. that is the triumph of it. I, I can't wait to have my heavenly body. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, so, Me too. <laughs> so there, there is a mystery, but what I'm trying to to do is help people to authentically mm -hmm. embrace the ambiguity of our life, the mystery of how sometimes people are not healed this side of heaven, and yet at the same time contend for the fullness of what Jesus has for you in mm. this life. Amen. Amen. You know, I actually, I think that was the first chapter I read in your book. Um, I think it was dealing with disappointment. You shared a story about um, a young boy who, in, in all aspects, it looked like he was going to be healed of cancer and then he ended up passing away. Can you share a little bit about that story and then talk about how we deal with the disappointment, but still contend yeah. for the miracles? Well, that story was the experience of Pastor Michael Miller, who he and Larissa founded the Upper Room Movement. Um, and he was the one that had believed for this young man's healing and he 
died. And uh, Michael was so mad at God. I mean, he was serving as a pastor at that point, uh, the, you know, not a senior pastor, but a young adult pastor. And he was so mad at God. He would not have gone to church unless he had been paid to do it. <laughs> and so he's he's having this conversation of God, you know, well, you know, I did what you called me to do, but you didn't come through God. And by the way, I think that's a really helpful tip. Mm-hmm. I think it is. be authentic with your conversations with God. He can handle it. And then what God marvelously did is gave Michael this prophetic dream that really spoke volumes about what it's like on this earth. And in that prophetic dream, um, Michael absolutely loves golfing and he loves this one course in Dallas. And, and so in his dream, he's golfing this course and it's just beautiful and he's having so much fun. And then the young man, um, I'm thinking his name was Willie comes up to him but it wasn't the the whole li- time that michael had known this young man he was very skinny and he didn't have hair but when he came driving up in the golf cart i mean he was buff and he was alive and he had this long flowing hair but michael still knew it was him and in the stream uh, uh willie says hey the the chief the head golf pro wants to speak to you and so go to the you know the center the golf course center and so he goes in and he sees the head golf pro and he's got these eyes that are just you know they're piercing blue eyes and the golf pro says well you golfed an unusual round out there and you can Um, take a souvenir if you want to, I'll give you a choice, you know, these nice golf shirts, or you can take this golden ticket I have and golf again. Mm. And Michael and Larissa are like driving to the funeral of the boy. And Michael is telling Larissa this dream and immediately they had this revelation that it was like the head pro was Jesus and saying, Hey, you can be offended at this journey and just take a souvenir and stop praying for people to be healed. Or you can realize this was an unusual round and get out and play golf again. And the beauty of this is Michael, um, and upper room ministry of young men who had cancer and miraculous stories of God's healing. Because even though they were disappointed with this death, they went on to believe God's word. So mm-hmm. it's just a really, really powerful um, truth that we gain. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that, because I think all of us out there who are pressing into that biblical experience, that acts life that we know is ours, have experienced disappointments like that. And um, we can either choose just like, you know, Jesus gave that precious man a choice to either say, hey, we tried it, we did it, or we can play again. And the truth is, is some things, you know, we don't always get right the first time or, you know, some things, you know, just don't turn out the way that we expect and we can continue to say yes to play the game. And thank you so much for sharing that because that was encouraging even in my heart. So thank you. Oh, it is. It is. And I think learning to take your heart before the Lord um, and where, you know, one of the cautions of scripture, we see it in the upper room passage, which is John 14 to 18, you know, where Jesus last words to the disciples is he's saying, Hey, don't let your heart be troubled. 
Mm. And he's giving them this opportunity to go through this crisis of the cross, the death and the resurrection in victory. And the key for that victory is not letting their heart be troubled. You know, so when you think about it, there they were in prayer, but they fell asleep. And one of the one of the I think it's Luke says they fell asleep because of sorrow in their Mm. heart. And so what happened with the disciples is, you know, like Peter did not have victory that night. Um, but he actually denied Jesus three times. And, and part of that happened because his heart was troubled and he allowed sorrow to settle into his heart. And then that caused him to fall in temptation. Mm. And I think that's a real pattern that helps us to realize that whenever sorrow or disappointment, when it settles in on our heart and we fall asleep in it, it can really cause you to slumber in your life where Mm -hmm. you miss the, the fullness of God and you literally need to be awakened um, and your heart has to be healed. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Is there anything burning on your heart you'd like to say directly to our listeners? Yes, I, I would love, first of all, to just speak hope, Mm. hope, healing, and freedom. And I, I believe I'm speaking to some of you. And as I've been talking, you have a chronic issue in your life. And it's been helping you to realize, wow. I can have victory in my journey with Jesus. For others of you, it's not yourself. It's somebody that you know and love. And as you've thought about it, you realize, oh, I blamed them. You know, by the way, turn that around and begin to offer that that help. Be a safe person. Be on people's healing teams where you have this wonderful aspect of walking with them to see the fullness of God's healing in their lives. And the other thing that's burning, and I I just want to release it right now, even even over the airwaves, I want to release a hunger for healing and miracles. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say to you that God heals today. I've seen blind eyes open. I've seen deaf ears open and people dancing around because God did a miracle. And I want to challenge you to contend in your heart for healing and miracles, even while you deal with the issues of life. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Would you pray for our listeners today? All of those things or whatever the Lord puts on your heart? Yes. Jesus, I pray, first of all, that they would understand and have a revelation about who you are, Jesus that they would, that it be revealed how by your stripes they are healed. Lord, I I pray that there'd be an activation of their faith. For some of them, you're going to give them a gift of faith, a mountain moving faith that, that they literally speak to the mountains. So Holy Spirit, just anoint them right now. For some of you, you may sense almost like a heat coming on you. Maybe you're feeling that heat in your hands. You could be feeling it at another part of your body. And I, and as you sense that, just know that the healing power of God is beginning to be activated in your life. You may feel a bit teary or even be trembling before the Lord. And I just say, allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you in a fresh way. Encounter him. He's 
real. And I pray, God, that there would be a new sense of walking with you in authentic conversation. Lord, if there's disappointments, I pray, God, that they'd be surrendered to you. And I pray for the listener, Lord, that that is hungering for the word of God, that they, they would be anointed to learn your word, mm-hmm. to feast on your word, to teach your word, and to be freed by your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for praying that for our listeners. And thank you so much for being here with me today. This was so healing, even for me. Oh, it's a joy. And I look forward to connecting in the future with you. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope and I pray that today's episode has blessed you. I will have links from today's podcast and resources in the show notes under Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira, wherever you get your podcast. There you'll find additional resources to connect with us and our special guest, Sue Detweiler. And be sure to pick up a copy of her new book, Healing Rain, Immersing Yourself in Christ's Love to Find Wholeness, of mind, body, and heart. And just for being a Revealing Jesus listener, you can get 40% off her book and free shipping with the code revealingjesus at bakerbookhouse.com. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I hope today's episode has blessed you. Please subscribe, share it with your friends, and don't forget to sign up for our ministry mailing list for more encouraging content about our beautiful Savior, Jesus. Just text JESUS to 1-833-815-7778. That's 1-833-815-7778. 7778. And of course, it's your turn now to join the conversation. Send me your burning questions, leaders you would like to hear from in the body of Christ, your testimonies, and more. Just click join the conversation in the show notes. And for more information about our ministry, visit us at ChristinaPereira.org. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.